drawing together now okay so So, so uh, this guy has a brain over here, okay? Yeah, you could you could see it now. Yeah? Look at this. The brain is here. If you can recognize brain. So, um, so over here, uh, vital means uh, brain, especially brain and heart. That's the main. Those two are the main ones. And basically, what body tries to do is preserve perfusion of heart and brain in all costs at all costs okay so so that's the point if you want to survive your brain and heart have to be fully perfused other organs don't matter so much some matter more some less definitely skin muscles and other um, tissues don't matter so much but the brain matters and the heart okay so in non-vital organs, you should imagine skin, muscles, and periphery. Okay, and this is a this is a pipeline, and I want you to be plumbers. So now we're gonna go through types of shock, different causes of shock, and but I want you to tell me first the three causes that any plumber can figure out. Okay, any plumber can figure out. What are the three causes? And at the end, you're going to wake up. You're going to wake up and you're going to remember you're a medical student and you're going to tell me the fourth one. Okay, so now really think as a plumber. And you're going to tell me three major causes, three groups of causes that will, can cause shock, circle terrorist shock. That means that the pressure in the pipe, pipes in the pipeline will fall. So what could be the first cause? What do you think? As we said before, the hypovolemic shock. Very good. So first one is hypovolemic. And this is a better term, the best one, hypovolemic. And what, what's going to be the cause then? Where are the causes? 
um, again, yeah, could be massive, massive bleeding. bleeding. Yes, so first of all, it's massive bleeding. You are totally right. Okay, yeah, so first. Or it can be from arteries or, or veins, it doesn't matter. By the way, why, why am I having 70% over here? It doesn't matter for today, but it means that 70% of blood is stored in, in, in veins, but it doesn't matter. The, I mean, it's just to remind you whatever fact. But of course, arterial bleeding or venous, it doesn't matter when the pressure will fall, when it is so serious that the pressure falls down, you're going to get into hypovolemic shock. Okay. And uh, basically, if it's only because of bleeding, you can call it what? You can call it hemorrhagic shock. But hypovolemic is much more general. So remember the term hypovolemic because what are the other causes? Um, like burns? Yes, very good. Burns, first of all, that's the, the, the major ones. You just started right away. Remember over here, you lose also proteins in burn so oncotic pressure goes down and you're losing liquid water into the interstitium as well so it's more serious so burns but this is serious right away but don't forget severe sweating okay profuse profuse mean like severe sweating severe vomiting severe polyuria severe diarrhea all of these will dehydrate you and at the end will lead to or can lead to hypovolemic shock okay yeah good so that's the first type hypovolemic shock what about second type um could it be like non obstruction very good. But I would like now, and you're right, it could be obstruction, but now I would like still, you're, and you're right, but we're plumbers and there's a pressure falling in my pipes. And first there's a leakage. And so we, we did that. And now, but I want, what, what will fail now? And you're not le losing blood, the but heart. very good. So pump is broken. Okay. So, so very good. So that's cardiogenic shock. So cardiogenic shock. So when the pump breaks down and what is, what will be the most common cause of this failure? What do you think? Or okay. But, but again, with heart failure, it doesn't have to lead to shock. I mean, like at the end, yeah, but it's it depends, but myocardial mi okay remember mi i will put it black because the necrosis is awful and mi can really either mi can you you can be totally fine if you're having mi just pain and it's it's not serious it, it will kill you instantly if you're having vfib or whatever you die immediately so so it, it can trigger and really remember from now on any ischemia can trigger a ischemia of the heart can trigger a such a disastrous such a malignant arrhythmia that it can kill you right away so that's what i want to mention mi can basically kill you or send you into shock depends how the cardiac output's going to be if the cardiac output falls instantly you're dead if the cardiac output decreases gradually, you get into cardiogenic shock. Okay, yeah, and basically remember, MI kills you or sends you into shock in two ways. Either one of them is arrhythmia, because as I said, ischemia locally will can 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 tr trigger a arrhythmia, or necrosis can trigger if there is a, like around it a if there is a uh, focus of necrosis around those cells that's a great uh, let's say uh, trigger point for any arrhythmia so it can kill you or or um, or send you into shock very easily just by arrhythmia it can be such a small tiny necrosis or ischemia only but it triggers this arrhythmia which kills you that's why heart is so dangerous 
or it's a, such a massive massive MI that it really kills part of the muscle like it's like I mean in in mass so it's a, such a big massive infarction that the the pump will just uh, fail not instantly but the the efficiency of the pump is going to go down and uh, will send you into shock, okay? And typically it's very commonly combination of both that you're gonna, you're like massive part of the muscle is dead. And when the muscle is ischemic or dead, it's not contracting. So you're losing a big part of a muscle for the work, for the cardiac output, okay? Yeah? And unfortunately, sometimes it's a combination of arrhythmia and also a dead muscle, okay? So, so, MI definitely um, can trigger a cardiogenic shock. Very good. And what else? With heart. Not only that. Some but, type uh, of valve. Very good. Very good. So, but before that, I want I don't want to forget it. Again, arrhythmia, you know what? Why am I saying arrhythmia again? Uh, because it could, it could by, by itself, itself cause the cardiogenic Yes, yes, because it doesn't have to be the trigger of arrhythmia doesn't have to necessarily be only MI. You know that any ion imbalance, disbalance, like decrease or increase potassium, uh, changes of sodium as well, well, depends, but calcium as well. So, so, so changes of ions or what? You just touch an electric wire, you know, and you're gonna get arrhythmia. Okay, so 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 there are many causes. Causes. Okay, so taser. Okay, so electricity or whatever electric wire. Okay, so, so there are many uh, tr other triggers that trigger arrhythmia. So don't forget that. And very well, you said valves. Last one. And again, this could be a rupture of a valve that could be under a MI. MI can cause a rupture of a valve, and when the valve suddenly fails and there's a prolapse or 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 whatever of course the blood will go back and now the cardiac output decreases and you are getting into shock cardiogenic shock okay so everything is about decreased cardiac output okay yeah but it's the same as if i'm saying hypotension today i mean that the cardiac output decreased because what if someone is bleeding it means he loses blood and less blood is coming into his heart. So at the end, heart is getting less of blood to pump. So that's why naturally, although the heart is fine, the the degrees of cardiac output is obvious in this case. Yeah, get it? Yeah? Good. So, so in all the cases, the cardiac output decreases. Okay, well, depends. I'll, I'll, st I'll still be explaining this in the table. So there's a small treat for you at the end. But in major cases, yeah, cardiac output is cardiac output is decreased. Okay. So valves, rupture of a valve. Okay, and now we're getting to the uh, that you were very right about. And that's the last one we can solve as plumbers and that is obstruction. So obstructive shock. Obstructive shock. An obstructive shock means what? Can you give me an example of an obstruction that would cause an obstructive shock? And I hope you're going to be wrong. Yeah. Embolism? But where? Pulmonary? Yeah, very good. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not so satisfied that's true. I uh, But some sometimes people say like embolism to, let's say, to... Uh, Cerebri media, embolism to artery, okay? But what I want to tell you, it has to be a massive embolism or blockage in the middle of the thoracic uh, part because you need to block major branch or major uh, central artery or vein. If you block a peripheral artery like the cerebral artery, it won't cause an obstructive shock. It will cause a stroke. 
but the rest of the body is fine with the, the pressure okay yeah as a plumber you know if if there is a if one there's a big house there are many many tops and whatever or or if we talk about um, heating all the heatings are fine except one has a um, obstructed um, pipe over there okay there's gonna be a cold in one room but the rest of the house is fine okay but if you block the major uh, pipe that leads the heat to the whole house then you're having in trouble okay and it's just the same with, with obstructive shock so you need to block massively the main pipes and pulmonary embolism is one of the best answers because if you block it here guess what the right eye has to pump everything through over there and naturally maybe it won't be able to pump everything it's normal, so that's why the we can say ah uh, preload of the left heart is decreased and cardiac output decreases. Yeah. In contrast to this, if there is a pamboli embolism, how this will be with the preload of the right ventricle? That will be majorly increased. Okay. By the way, so yeah, pulmonary embolism. What else? Uh, no more Sorry, Very good. Like it's just the same. Pneumothorax, oh, sorry. What about, like, tumors within, like, well, it depends. Depends. If it's a big tumor, yeah, but, but that grows in a way. So, so basically, yeah, but pneumothorax, that's common. And you just lose, you know, the, the whole lung collapses. And when the lung collapses, again, you have to run everything through the other lung. Okay. So, pneumothorax. And now, one more, very important, or two more still. And this is crucial that you understand why it is under obstructive shock. And I will draw a artery or whatever. And d look at this. If I will step on the artery here, you see the obstruction here? Yeah, you see the obstruction? And the same you can think of a heart. In case you step on the heart inside, it's going to be obstructed in a way. So can you give me a some some something serious that can happen to heart? And basically, although you would really like to put it under cardiogenic shock, watch out in US family and so on, they want you to say it's obstructive because it, it has a really important logic. What it, what is that? Uh very cardiac. That, that's okay cardiac no. tamponade is better cardiac tamponade because pericarditis goes like develops slowly but tamponade is very serious but by what by what is the tamponade by or by... Um, um, fluid and the pericardial stuff okay okay so very good so not the let's say fluid it depends uh, if, if we talk about some infection and again and whatever, this builds up slowly. So the pericardium will expand and basically heart will have space to work. But in case it's a bleeding, serious bleeding, then it's going to really, it's going to really block the heart. And tell me how the blood gets there. Something with the coronary arteries. So bleeding Good bleeding idea, arteries. but basically this would be very, very uh, rare. What about uh, compressing like, like another, another like, like the, the ventricle, ventricle, like, like the right, right one? Maybe? Well, uh, now, well, it depends. Now we're talking about how we are to, all together. Now we think of a mechanism, how the blood will very fast get into the pericardium so basically can you, can you figure out a mechanism how this gets there and with the coronary artery it's good but that could be rather if someone stabs me into the heart and uh, or stabs me into the chest and cuts only the coronary artery then i will bleed there okay but they don't rupture so much the coronary arteries themselves something else ruptures and it has to do with coronary artery. It has to do with coronary artery, but it's not coronary artery. Yes, yes, yes. 
It happens so, later. It happens later. Like an epithelium injury caused by atherosclerosis or... No. Maybe it's the cardiac pain? Rosis of the muscles and... Okay, so... The connection with coronary artery is obvious because what happens when coronary artery gets blocked? What, what will you get? You will have... You won't have a obstructive shove, you will have a Myocardial MI. And if it's a severe MI, that means transmural infarction. That means that the whole wall dies. So if I put a cr cross section, this is a left ventricle, this is ep epicardium, this is endocardium. So if the whole wall dies due to blockage of coronary artery, that's a STEMI infarction. And th these people, if they survive for first three days, they can have a bonus on third day. And because this is a necrotic wall, and especially if the afterload increases for the heart, for whatever reason, they're just stressed. And now the heart has to really pump and the pressure in the left ventricle, if it's a, a left ventricle MI, it could be the same right ventricle for the right ventricle uh, MI, but for, let's say we're having a left ventricle over here. So this ruptures. And when the wall ruptures, you are you are having a serious complication. And that's a, that is a heart tampon tamponade or tamponade. Okay, so remember people after STEM infarction, watch out third, fourth day. If something happens to them now, the cardiac output decreases, it could be tamponade. And the only thing you can do is take a big needle and suck it out. Okay? So think of it. And uh, although they survived MI, they have no serious arrhythmia. Watch how this can happen and sometimes happen. And it's not so rare. Will this happen 14 days later? What do you think? No, because there is already a scar. So, so the wall is the most fragile time, or the, the wall is the most fragile, like this third, fourth day, fifth, when you know the immune system comes there, they're trying to get rid of the necrosis or whatever, and now it can really rupture. So, you really don't want to increase pressure of these people in the ventricle during these days, okay. That's why they should rest and not do anything. Good. So, but the complication is tamponade and the blood will get around very fast around the heart. And then heart cannot expand in diastole. So the diastolic volume is decreased and diastolic volume is decreased and cardiac output falls. And this is a beautiful example of obstructive shock. Okay, so heart tamponade, so heart tamponade, and still, can you guess another cause of obstruction? And this is pretty rare, but it happens sometimes, and it has to do with atherosclerosis again. But over here, you got a year 50 years old and now suddenly severe pain between your scapula. It looks like MI, but it's not MI. And this is very typical, the, the pain between scapulas, remember, like, like serious pain. And typically, maybe they say, I have a pain and they die in a second. So most of them die immediately, but only few survive. And those who survive, they can be... <laughs> Unlikely safe, so you're very lucky if you say uh, survive this, but you know, you start to bleed into the wall of the aorta. Okay, so so the wall, if, if the, the whole wall would rupture, you're dead instantly. But over here, the, you know, aorta is pretty thick and can like uh, survive high pressures. And but typically the one of the leaves, the inner leaves, it, it ruptures and you bleed between the leaves of the aorta into the wall. 
and you see the blockage over here you see the blockage here yeah obstruction okay and it's called aortic dissection it's called di dissection of the aorta aortic dissection not not a pleasant thing to have okay basically they have to sometimes it's misinterpreted as a mi and you're doomed if they don't bring you to a hospital where they have a very good cardio surgery okay so you're dead basically so so that's aortic dissection and we're getting farther and now i would like you to wake up and be medical students because we're getting to the fourth example and what is that anaphylactic or septic very good and in this case yeah of course the 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 the, the plumbers they don't they don't know this but you know so basically now it's about not losing blood not not failing uh, pump not an obstruction but it's a relative uh, decrease of blood because your vessels expanded okay so and this in general you, all of these you put in under one special term which is called distributive shock Okay, so you're having problem with distribution and over here we divide it still into vasogenic. But I guess I'm going to delete it here and then to, to have a space so vasogenic or neurogenic. Okay. And first, the, the mo two most important ones, th those that you should definitely know, one of them is septic shock, and the other one is anaphylactic okay? shock. And first, the septic shock. So, so septic shock, uh, you see, basically, you, you should know what is sepsis. And what is sepsis? Sepsis means you're having a fever, you're having a... Um, uh, tachycardia but mainly fever is the important you're, you're having high fever because the bacteria triggered this fever so you're having bacteria or it could be also uh, uh, viral okay but doesn't matter something some pathogen in your blood it could be COVID as well uh, triggers your endothelium to produce so many interleukins and cytokines and whatever there are many theories about this there's no no one explanation that somehow it happens that you're suddenly vasodilate there are many triggers which which cause this okay but we know the pathogen is at the beginning there's a bacteria or virus and this leads to what sudden hypotension so basically septic shock means that there is a sepsis and now someone is in sepsis and now when the pressure falls that is septic shock okay and as i said there are many triggers one of them we say we know for example that gram negatives if you lyse them they release endotoxin so lipopolysaccharides and they are able to trigger inducible anal synthase. But this is a very old explanation. We know now it's much more complicated. It really has to do with this mess up of uh, cytokine uh, communication. Okay. And this misinterpretation, this, this uh, overload of cytokines in, in the blood just triggers somehow endothelial cells and other cells. Um, and at the end, it ends up with massive vasodilation so and that's why it's vasogenic because uh, we rather see a local but everywhere but the trigger is everywhere in, in in the vessels okay now they are irritated and at the at the end they vasodilate and that's septic shock but i'll tell you one more hint because maybe you're going to have it in exam still there is another term which is called sears and sears is just the same as sepsis systemic inflammatory response syndrome and we see this in young people like you are typically younger men 
and they're having just a trauma, no infection involved. And suddenly, we see them as that they are having sepsis. We don't know. It's about cytokines again. It's dysregulated inflammation that maybe started in the broken thigh, but suddenly the local process gets generalized. And again, they have this cytokine storm, and this ends up typically with vasodilation again, although there is not no infection proved. But it's just the same. And also, if there is vasodilation, blood pressure goes down, and you're having, it's called a Sears shock. Okay? So that's a bonus for you over here about Sears. It's just like sepsis. Okay? And we still don't know what, what it is exactly, but we, you see it. So that, that was septic shock, but what about anaphylactic? It's just the same at the end. It's vasodilation, but this is triggered by your immunity. You are hyper-reactive to uh, certain antigens. You are typically allergic to many things, and suddenly what happens is that the reaction is too massive, and uh, basophils and other cells that release, uh, for example, histamine and other vasodilation um, uh, substances will cause that it's so massive again vasodilation and you are getting into anaphylactic shock okay typically watch out for uh, bees they're very dangerous in this bees are much worse than wasps for example wasps wasps are not as bad as as bees those were vasogenic distributive shocks and what about neurogenic well over here it's about the neurogenic control and what system controls my vessel tone it's the sympathetic trunk so basically i'm turning off sympathetic trunk and i can turn it off reversibly by for example some drugs. So remember, general anesthesia, typically, sometimes you see it, so watch out. The good thing is that typically it happens on, in a theater, and you got all the things you need to keep him alive over there. So that's, that's a bonus, but sometimes you see it there. Well, and what about irreversible? Like, like, can you, like, can you or something? Depends. That would have to be, like, somewhere in the brainstem or whatever. But what about trauma, not to brain, but to... Complete spinal cord injury. Yes, yes. It doesn't have to be complete. It can be, like, partial. It doesn't matter. But somehow it triggers what? It turns off the sympathetic trunk. So typically it happens when typically... Uh, remember thoracic part if if you have a lesion there okay compression you jump to water you know it's not deep enough too bad because although they would survive or whatever they can have a bonus to it and that is massive vasodilation because uh, you know you you're controlling it from up over here and if it's if there is an injury somewhere below like let's say c5 and uh, like higher so at the thoracic part you're going to turn off most of the sympathetic trunk and boom you can vasodilate and fall into uh, neurogenic shock okay so spinal cord injuries so we went i, I gave you these four types and now i want to hear which out of these you think is the most common but not the one don't I don't want to hear the ones who already heard the lecture or saw the lecture. So g try to try to guess. Anaphylactic. So anaphylactic is pretty uncommon, and it's we put it together. It to anaphylactic with neurogenic, they give you just four percent of all shocks. And I want all of those six shocks we went through. One, two, three. Yeah. So, so those six shocks. So don't forget the other one. So, so what? What do you think? If I'll jump okay. over here. 
Yeah, okay. It maybe it used to be, but it's not anymore. Depends it's where. It's right? So hypovolemic, sixteen percent, and they're together with they're pretty. This the they're so they're the, those are both second the most common. So hypovolemic cardiogenic, very common. Obstructive, very rare, two percent. So which one's going to be the most common? It's the last one, yeah. So sixty-two percent. Septic shock is the most common one. Remember, and it's because of hospitals and and treatments. You know that there's so many people having uh, tubes in them all the time, uh, and this the, these are the the places of, of the infection. Okay, yeah. So remember, septic shock the most common one, and only about treatment. Remember one thing. Kill the bacteria as soon as possible. So antibiotics like straight away. Okay? Yeah? Good. So these were the types of shock. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.